May, may I speak with Alan Aspect, please? It's me. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. My name is Adam Smith. I'm calling from NobelPrize.org, the official website of the Nobel Prize in Stockholm. Yes. It, <laughs> Many congratulations. It, 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 thank you. It's a lot of news. <laughs> Um, uh, quite lovely news. How did you receive it? Well, it, it, it's, uh, of course, a, a surprise because we know that there are so many outstanding physicists who deserve it. And uh, Well, it comes at the end, of, I mean, not at the end, sorry. It comes as part of a great lineage of prizes in quantum mechanics, starting, yes. goodness, 90 years ago the prize sure. in 1932. That's an extraordinary thought, isn't it? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think even to earlier times, uh, well, you know, 22, yes, you're right. 22 is Einstein and Bohr, right? The same year. Well, uh, yes, and then, uh, or 21, well, I can't remember. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, um, but then uh, Heisenberg in 1932 for the birth Abs of quantum mechanics. Yes, and then Heisenberg and, uh, of course, all these great names. Uh, yeah. Of course, I am very impressed because I'm certainly not at the same level that these people who have uh, really totally changed the, uh, the physics. But uh, I am proud to be on the same list, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Indeed. And um, it really speaks to the robustness of quantum mechanics. Um, yes. Uh, you know, uh, w w when I did this experiment, testing Bell's inequalities, at the end, the conclusion is, yes, quantum mechanics resist all possible attacks. <laughs> <laughs> In a sense, my experiments was trying to, to find a, 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 a limit of quantum mechanics, and we didn't find it. Isn't that, isn't that extraordinary? What a creation yes. by yes. A collective humanity. And also the international nature of this prize to Vienna and to, um, to you in France and uh, John Clauser in the US speaks to the international effort that goes into all of this. Okay, and uh, it's important that the scientists uh, keep their international uh, community at a time when the world uh, is not so, so nice and where nationalism is uh, taking over in many countries. So we have to do all efforts to keep uh, scientists making uh, international communities, there is no doubt. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important point. The, the, the phenomenon you study, this quantum entanglement, is yes. so weird. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And uh, it's so weird that, uh, as I presented in the Nobel Symposium a few weeks ago, the fact that uh, I am accepting in my mental images something which is totally crazy, which is non-locality. Uh, of course, uh, I know that non-locality does not allow you to send a useful message faster than light, but in my mental images, I have accepted non-locality because otherwise I cannot even think of entanglement, except in the equations, of course. But if I want to have an image, I put non-locality in my image. Non-locality is the fact that there is a kind of instantaneous relation between two objects. Of course, something that Einstein could not accept, but he had realized that entanglement meant that. Mm -hmm. Yes, this connection over unimaginably vast distances that is possible. Extraordinary. And, yes. And of course your work settled uh, 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 that the debates between Einstein and Bohr. Yes. So uh, again, uh, the historical significance of your work is, is amazing. Okay, I, I'm glad you say that, but there is one point uh, I want to make clear. Uh, when people say, okay, uh, the debate between Einstein and Bohr was settled in favor of Bohr, I like to, to say that uh, Einstein owes a great, great merit in raising the question. And if nowadays we know so many things about entanglement and we want to use it for quantum technology, etc., we must give the credit to Einstein to have raised the question. So um, 
Uh, I, I, well, for instance, I got the same year a Niels Bohr medal and an Albert Einstein medal, and I think that it is fair. Uh, <laughs> there is not one who wins and the other one who loses. Uh, Bohr wins from a certain point of view, but Einstein wins because he spotted something extraordinary. And it's always important to challenge. Yes, yes exactly. Um, well, thank you very much indeed. I noticed something from your CV, which is that just before you did your PhD, you spent three years doing voluntary service overseas in Cameroon. Abs teaching. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, you should know that it was essential because it is a place where I studied quantum mechanics in his modern formalism in the book of Claude Quentanogy, who got the Nobel Prize in uh, 97. And uh, I studied by myself during this uh, Cameroon period the book of Claude Quentanogy, Franck Lalloway and Bernard Dieu. And uh, when I came back to France, I was ready to understand the various papers, Bell's paper. Of course, John Bell it's a pity that he's no longer there, but John Bell is a very important uh, figure in that equation. Indeed. Um, it's, isn't that interesting that life propels you onwards and sometimes you have to just stop and take time for reflection? Yes, it was exactly. Uh, when I was in Cameroon, I was teaching, but I had plenty of free time and I used that time to... Uh, I knew that my uh, education in quantum mechanics was not good at all. You know, it was all the old quantum mechanics solving partial differential equations. And the book of uh, Cohen Tanuji, Dieu and Lalloway, taught me where is the physics in quantum mechanics. And I was then ready to understand the discussion by John Bell, etc. That's a very important lesson for people listening, I think. But, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Goodness, how do you feel about the prospect of all this attention that is focused on you now? Ah, I will try to survive it. <laughs> you know, my phone is ringing all the time, so I've shut it down. <laughs> this is why we had to go to a different phone in an a, in a, in a office. Well, I'm very lucky that you took the time to do that. Thank you very much indeed. And I'm so happy. Thank you very much. That's good to hear. Lovely. Thank you. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this moment... We have another special episode you won't want to miss on Nobel Prize origin stories. We present clips of laureates recalling formative moments and Adam explores the unexpected factors that can shape the lives and careers of these great minds. Find it on Acast or wherever you listen to podcasts. Podcasts.